two very special words of welcome with us today are as our pastoral council. After the homily here, they're going to get commissioned. We are very, very blessed by their ministry and service to our parish. Give them a wonderful round of applause. Flying over to the far side of the church here, Tina Bessenfelder. Raise your hand, Tina, college graduate, back home, right? And she is now one of our new video streamers. Give her a round of applause. <laughs> now we're in church and we can be honest, yes? yes? How many of you have ever had this experience? So you watch the news at the end of the day and then you can't fall asleep. Right? Right? We all have a little bit of this, right? You'll be very, very, very happy to know that they have now come up with a name for that. So you watch the news, you can't fall asleep. You with me on this? Ready for the name? It's called Newsomnia. <laughs> That's a fact. Just came out hot off the presses. What's it called? Newsomnia. So you watch the news and you can't fall asleep. It makes you so upset. Yes? Now, logically, you could just say, turn the TV off, don't watch the news, and you'll get a good night's sleep. Yes or yes? yes. No, because not all the news comes from, from international or national news, right? And from television. Sometimes the news is a, a phone call we get. Sometimes the news is that we get from the doctor. Sometimes the news that agitates us is somebody that's saying something about us. You get the idea, right? And, and so we get so worked up, we get so distressed that we can't sleep. Called Newsomnia. And I would like to suggest today that the scriptures give us the antidote, if you will, for Newsomnia. And here's what it is. It's not just turning the TV off or never answering your phone or never talking to anybody again. That's not going to work, is it? But what is going to work is speaking a different set of news. We come together today to hear proclaimed to us the good news of Jesus Christ. It is a different, it is a different message. Go to the uh, psalm today. The precepts of the Lord give what? Joy to the heart. And when we wrap our mind around the news, the truth, of God in our lives, then instead of having chaos and distress, what should we have? Joy. Or go to the first reading today. Literally, the Holy Spirit of God came upon the 70 and that they were actually sent to speak a different message. Did you catch this at the end? Oh, that all the people should prophesy, meaning speak a deeper truth about God. That all the people should be filled with God's Spirit instead, to the second reading, of getting wrapped up, trapped up in all the crap of this world. That ultimately, if we build our lives around the good news of Jesus Christ, then we will have a confident faith, knowing that God is with us wherever we And that whatever we have to go through, God is with us. And that's just not a nice idea. It is the promise of the Lord. And that when we live this deeper truth, when we have a mindfulness that God is with us wherever we go, whatever we're going through, and in whatever we do, that should give us a comfort and a confidence, knowing, first of all, that we're not going through this alone, knowing that with God's help we can accomplish and do all things knowing that with God's help, we will find the grace and the strength that we need. So we come together this morning to hear a different set of news, the good news, the hopefulness, and the joy of the gospel. And it's not just being Pollyanna, oh, that's nice, God is with us. It is a deep truth. And the precepts of the Lord, the deep truth, brings what to the heart? Joy. It breaks through the worry and stress and anxiety and fear that we're going through. And though that all the people should prophesy, meaning that we should leave here filled with this good news, and that we should go and tell everyone and change the narrative 
and change the dialogue. Imagine if we all left here talking about different news, about the promises of God. If we left here talking about a different set of vocabulary, about the faithfulness and the care that God has for each of us. And our hope is that God is with us wherever we and in whatever we are going through. So truth be told, they came up with a name for it the last couple of weeks. It's called Nusomnia. But if you and I live the good news, embrace the good news, really deeply reflect on the promises of God that God is with us always and in everything we're going through, that should bring peace to our hearts and honestly should give us all a good night's sleep. Amen? Amen. So here's a real practical suggestion for you. Get yourself a notebook. Everyone, young and old, good, real good practice to get the kids doing this too. Get a notebook. Don't do this by your bed, but sit down for a few minutes as you wind down your day and write everything that's on your mind and heart. Literally, write it down. Just use phrases, draw pictures, whatever works for you. Give it to God, close the book, and then go to bed. Because in that moment, in that simple exercise, you will give this to God. And where, who better to give it to than God? Trusting that God is with you wherever you go. God is with you in whatever you're going through, now and forever and ever. It's a silly exercise. But if you take the time to do this, Close the book, give it to God, and you can go to bed, and you can go in peace. Amen? Amen.